everyone. Um, like I was introduced, I'm Lisa Yoder. I'm a front end developer, um, but I wasn't always. And um, long ago, before tech was even like a twinkle in my eye, I read a lot of blogs. I had this really kind of boring desk job um, and a lot of extra time on my hands, so I started reading a ton of blogs. Um, these are some of the, the oldies but goodies, but also the new ones that I'm reading now. Um, and so I started my own blog. And over the years, it was really hard to write consistently and um, always have something to post. And um, I really wanted to figure out how to blog more. And so I decided to sit down and think about all of the reasons why I wasn't blogging and what the excuses were that I had kind of subconsciously accepted. Um, and so I kind of made a list of all of those. And um, one by one, kind of thought through ways to take away each excuse or each barrier that I was using to writing more. Um, and one of those things was that I, I wasn't sure where to do my writing. Um, I'm not really like a word girl. Um, Google Docs felt kind of like not exactly right either. My Google Docs are kind of a mess and pretty disorganized. And um, I didn't always like to write in the actual kind of blogging WordPress or once upon a time Blogspot interface. Um, and so I thought like where would make sense for me to spend my time writing? Um, and I thought, well, now that I'm a developer, I spend all my time in my, co in my text editor. Um, so I decided to start writing in Sublime. Um, I was in it all day anyway. If I had an idea, I could kind of like surreptitiously jot it down real quick while I was at work um, and then come home and write about it later. So I wasn't missing out on any of that and it wasn't super obvious uh, <laughs> if, I, if I took a minute to jot something down. Um, and so naturally, whenever you're writing in a, a text editor, if you're a developer, kind of a tech type, um, you think, maybe I should make this into a Git repo. So that's what I did. Um, this is my blog content repo. Uh, as you can see, I added a lot of other things into it eventually, and it kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of a mess. I need to go through and clean it up a little bit. Um, but the primary two kind of blogging related directories in here are potential posts, so posts that are in progress, um, and also once they've been published, I move them to a directory called published post. Um, I also have in here a list of talk ideas, um, job applications, conference notes. It, it's kind of turned into just a little bit of a dumping ground. Um, and I threw this up on Bitbucket, um, because that's where I was spending most of my time, and uh, unlimited free repos, private free repos, so that is, is great. I didn't necessarily want my blog content um, repo to be accessible to all prior to hitting publish. And some of this stuff was never meant to be public anyway. So um, over here you can see the commits that I made over time. Um, they're not super descriptive, but no one else is looking at them, so I can kind of look through that and figure things out. Um, and so I eventually realized after using this like dumping ground for blog posts and ideas of talks I wanted to pitch to conferences, that there is, there's just a bunch of things that you can use Git with um, or for in your everyday life. So I just thought through a list of a list of those to share with you today, and hopefully some of them will be um, interesting or applicable to you, and you kind of think about how you can implement them um, in your own lives if you find them appealing. Um, and the first one I came up with was developing or tracking recipes that you make over time. Um, I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time pinning recipes to make. I never know what to make for supper, and it's like a constant struggle. Um, so I have this, you know, 
as many of us do, Pinterest food board. Um, but the longer I'm on there, the harder and harder it gets to find anything. So you're like scrolling through the, um, the masonry tiles and you don't know where the pumpkin yaki went. Um, and so you're like, it takes you like half an hour to find the recipe you're looking for. So um, it might be easier to do this in a little bit of a repo. And that way, if you tweak something in the recipe, you can make a note of that. And um, if you like it, you can commit that change back to master, and that is your new pumpkin gnocchi situation. Um, this one I kind of lifted from a guy named Buster Benson, who tracks his beliefs uh, publicly in a GitHub repo. Um, you can see on the right, that's kind of the, a screenshot of the top part of his uh, public repo, which is his kind of like public facing self where he shares his beliefs. Um, and it's really fascinating to read through this and kind of why he decided to do this and, and how he manages to update it. Um, and then over here you can see his commits. Um, I just thought this was kind of a really fascinating idea. And th this way you have kind of a, a record of how you've changed and grown over time which could be really fascinating um, for you, or potentially if you wanted to do this with a child or a friend or a partner, it could be a really fun way to look back later on. Um, you can also write a book using Git. Um, I think it might be a fun way to experiment with the choose your own adventure genre. You could branch for different options. Um, I don't know, my, I, I'm not sure if these covers are real. Uh, my personal favorite on here is You Are a Shark. Um, so if you have any burning desire to write a choose your own adventure book, I think it could be a really fun way to do that. Um, I was chatting with somebody about my, my blog content repo and how it's kind of turned into something completely different. And um, he was like, oh, that's, that's kind of why I use Evernote. I was like, oh yeah, I guess that is why people use Evernote. I just never quite took to Evernote. Um, and we were having this conversation around the time that Evernote like changed their pricing or like you could only sync a couple devices instead of all your devices. And um, I think he's actually here. Uh, so he decided to start a repo called Evernote.git. So you can totally just replace your Evernote if you've had enough. Um, or not, that's fine. Um, but I thought it was kind of a fun way uh, to deal with that. You can use Git to journal. Um, I am more of a paper and pen kind of girl, but um, sometimes if you're just trying to get something down really fast or um, like fancy paper feels too intimidating, like you're afraid to mess it up, um, the point of Git is that you can like mess things up and then roll them back and, and you don't have to worry about it. So it might feel like there's a little lower uh, barrier to entry there with uh, journaling. You can also take notes at conferences like this one. Um, so this is a, kind of a blown up screenshot of the directories that I have so far in my um, current blog content repo that also houses conference notes because I'm a mess. Um, so in here I have Eleconf, and then um, inside that directory there are files for each talk that I went to and wanted to take notes about. Um, this one, this WordCamp US is from WordCamp US last year. Um, so you can take a minute and get set up with your conference notes repo that will be with you throughout the weekend if you wish. Um, you can also write your conference talk using Git. Um, you can reorganize, like maybe create a branch and reorganize the flow, play around with it, see what you like, um, and then commit that back and decide on the first one. I usually use Reveal.js for my slides, so this is really nice um, if you're using anything like that or in Markdown um, to write your slides. You can kind of shuffle around and then roll back if you decide that it's not quite what you wanted. Um, you can also manage your read, listen, watch lists. Um, I have a Goodreads account, but I never ever log in. Um, and so there's books in there from like 2008 that 
you know, I just never update and I never look at. Um, and also, I was, I, whenever I'm watching Netflix, I'm usually using an Apple TV and I don't know, does anybody else have trouble finding your, like, my list thing in Netflix? It's really hard. Um, I looked it up on my laptop the other day when I was taking screenshots for this and it, it's not too bad there, but I just find it really difficult. So um, this could be a really great way to keep track of that and sync it with a partner or somebody that you wanna watch things with. Um, I have also used this as photo storage in a desperate situation. This is probably not recommended. Um, I had to turn in a work laptop a few months ago and I realized as I was like driving up to the office that I had a giant folder of iPhone photos that I had to like rip off of the, my phone to make more space. Um, and I didn't know what to do and I was like, how am I gonna get these pictures off of here? Like I'm, this laptop's about to be wiped. Um, so private repo on Bitbucket to the rescue. Um, probably only best in uh, desperate situations, but it's there if you need it and good to know about. Um, so I was talking through this talk with somebody and uh, he was like, well, all of that sounds great, but how does this work on my phone? Like we, I use Wonderlist because like it syncs with me and my partner and it, um, it's like just a mobile app right there. Um, but there are apps for that. Um, you can use a working copy for iOS. Um, and I found, I'm not sure how to say this, Agit, I would guess, for Android. Um, I don't use either of these, but there's certainly options to check out. Um, or you could just edit right in um, the GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever your Git host of choices. Um, right in the source. So some of you might be thinking like, oh, okay, that's great, but I don't currently use Git and it's kind of intimidating to me. Where do I start if I wanna get started with something like this? Um, there's a really great um, talk called Git and GitHub for Poets um, where somebody at, I think Kickstarter, decided to get everybody on his Everybody he kind of like interfaced with at work um, using Git and GitHub, um, including like community people and marketing folks, and and um, kind of talk through how to how to teach it to people who um, are are not coming from a coding background. So I would recommend checking that out. Um, there's also Try Git, and um, a link to a series of articles called GitHub for Beginners. Um, and if you choose to go to the Bitbucket route, there's also a bunch of tutorials on Atlassian that you can take a look at. Um, and all of these are links. I can, um, I'm gonna throw these slides up online somewhere and I can tweet them out and you can check these out. Um, so if you decide to start version controlling your life um, or implementing this in any kind of new way that makes sense for you. I would love to hear about it. So if you could please tweet at me, um, that's my Twitter handle and my website. Thanks so much. Okay.